Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for November 4th. So uh, let's go over today's uh, today's moves and, and a lot of movers really to kind of go over uh, today. We'll go over some of those areas in this video. But um, first of all, let's let's just talk about the you know the move in these uh, in these indices. You know the Q's up 4.4 percent today. Uh, Spy was up 2.2 percent. Um, lagging uh, was small caps, right? So flat on the day. Um, interesting move in the bonds today. They kind of um, regained some some of the. Um, uh, price action that that they uh, you know they were kind of uh, sold the last couple of days. Um, they recouped some of that. I guess is the word that I was looking for. Gold and silver, not still not much really going on there. And the VIX got you know, as we kind of talked about in yesterday's video, basically a VIX crush, right? Uh, the VIX was down twenty percent today, right? All the way down below thirty. At one point, I think we we almost touched twenty seven. Was it? Yeah, we hit a low of twenty eight oh three today in the VIX. Um, and it did close below uh, 30. So we'll look at some of these charts. And, um, you know, my thought, you know, just kind of continuation from yesterday about the VIX, um, what I said was all things being equal, um, the VIX would probably go down and, uh, you know, yeah, basically all things equal. And, and um, we did get that big move down, right? Remember, again, like this is, th there's a lot to be learned from, I think, today, like, and, um, not just this particular election and the events this week, right? But so it doesn't even matter what level trader you are, right? It doesn't matter if you traded through the last election. This is all completely different, right? I mean, I don't think that, you know, you may ever see a lot of the events that we've seen here in 2020. So if you're a trader and, and you've been through this for the whole year, there is a just a, a huge amount of experience, right, that you have put underneath your belt this year in terms of trading. Just make sure that you you write down some of these things. Um, we'll go through again today's price action and, and why I think it's kind of um, you know so interesting and, and lessons to be learned from from today. Um, but mainly, like that's you know that's part of what makes what we do so interesting as traders, investors. Um, it's never, you know, there's really hasn't been, especially this year, it hasn't, you know, it's, it, it has been anything but dull and it's been action packed. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, the more that you could be objective and the more that you can change your mind fairly quickly and be decisive, um, the better that you probably had this year, right? This has not been a year to sit, to stay, um, permit anything, Right and to and to be um, to be stubborn in any way, right? Uh, you know, you you could have you know even if you you've done a couple of those things this year, you may have made it out cleanly, but I think to kind of take away and where the really good traders that I know um, are pretty nimble, right, in what they're doing, and they don't stay hooked to, you know, what their perception was or what, you know, really good um, traders, I think, follow price action, right? And, and again, the ability to kind of change their mind um, as the market changes, um, you know, along the way. All right, so that's kind of just, you know, some quick thoughts on, on 2020. Um, uh, but again, I, I think you've got, a, you know, a tremendous amount of experience that you've that you've put underneath your belt in just a short amount of time. Just make sure that it's, you know, the other thing about trading and, and being a good trader is, is continuously improving, right? There's, you never get to a point where you've just figured this game out and it's easy, right? It is always a mental battle um, with what you should be doing uh, versus what you may not be doing um, and so on and so forth. So let, let's talk about some some of these moves. I, I talked about how um, the VIX, you know, first of all, I think that's a kind of a big story for the day. Uh, let's also, so let's start to go through a couple of the, the, the indices and then certainly I'll talk about the sectors, um, how I traded today and uh, and my thoughts to kind of just, you know, as, as a... Um, as a conclusion for the for this video, but um, one of the things I would say, right, and, and listen, it's very difficult to kind of complain about today's price action if you came in long, right? I mean, up four point four percent. 
um, SPY up 2.2%. The one thing that kind of stood out to a lot of traders right around the open was if you pull your eyes to the bottom left over here, right? This, this, um, you know, we have a market breadth indicator that we use, but breadth was not strong today. So, you know, if, if you kind of look across, um, where's, where's my screen as well on Bloomberg, um, to kind of go over this, right? So you could see, for example, today in the Dow, right, which again, the Dow is kind of, it's a little bit old school. It's a price weighted index. But just to kind of take a look at this, you could see that both in, in the Dow, you know, and it's very easy to analyze, right? 30 names in it. There were 16 names that declined today with this price action. Look at the S&P. There was 268 names that declined today. Uh, there was 236 that advanced today. Now, there is some ex explanation for this, right? And of course, you know, even in the NASDAQ, with the NASDAQ being up, the Qs up 4.4% today. This is not a huge distribution of advancing to um, declining names. Like this, that's not strong breath. Now we did get decent breath the last couple of days, but um, so let's let's first of all let's let's look under the hood a minute. You know, in the Qs, right? You had some names like look at the PDD by the way. Uh, Docu was up. 13%. Uh, but there was a number of names that fell too today. So let, let's talk a little bit. Um, so let's, first of all, I want to go over the um, the technicals in the S&P because we do that just about in every video. Um, three, four, nine, seven and a half. That's your new resistance, right? So we talked about this, of course, pre-market as well. Um, there is a note that I sent out to members, right? That has all of these levels in the S&P included, right? We also put out the chart of the day. My chart of the day was biotech, which abs was absolutely, I think, um, top three charts of the day, I would say. Um, and then if we kind of drill in, um, you know that I talk a lot about this one hour chart, right? And that we basically got to this top of value. Look at all the consolidation that happened in the overnight markets, right? We rallied a bit, uh, we came in. Um, this level 3368 is still a level to kind of trade against for the week. But um, the thing, a couple of things that stand out to me on this chart is number one, right? We did get above value, right? So that, that was the hurdle as well as this 200 period moving average, which is the second thing. So this is the first time that price has been above this 200 period moving average since, you know, this breakdown back here, right? As I'm circling here, this was a couple Mondays ago, right? So this is the first time that we've gotten above here. So you can't like, you know, I don't, you know, I'm trying to be very objective about, you know, the market breadth and so forth, but, you know, these are good things, right? To kind of get us um, back above here, and um, and now back in the short term uptrend. Let's look at the Qs and let's look at, and then we'll talk about IWM for a couple of minutes. But look at the Qs. The Qs look like they're still going here a little bit. They're also same same thing, right? Here, uh, a couple of weeks back, you know where we broke the 200 period moving average. Look at what we're doing now. Um, you know, and this was kind of interesting how this developed this week. I thought, at, you know, if we did not hold the lows from last week, which, I mean, we really came within a whisper of that. And it's amazing how quickly things can change. The picture can, can change, right? And um, we did not explore these, end up exploring these lower levels, these virgin point of controls down here. So now we're in a completely different picture. Um, you know, again, we, we gave a we we gave a webinar on the on the market webs on Monday for members, and I some of the things that we talked about was hey things are going to have to really bounce because I wasn't really particularly liking what I was seeing on Monday, but you knew that we had a big week in front of us and that things can change uh, you know very quickly. So you know we did make it through this resistance, right? And um, you know these are good things, right? In terms of what we needed to do. You know, we didn't get rejected here. You know, we didn't bounce and reject and go lower. So, um, you know, overall, really good price action. Uh, breath, not so much, but price action, um, you know, very good. You know, again, Qs up 4.4% for the day. Um, here's where it was kind of interesting today, and we'll get to some of these rotations that happened underneath the hood in the indices. But IWM just finished basically unched. For the day, so the small caps, which were the previous couple days, you know, were showing some a little bit of leadership in terms of a better picture. Uh, they, of course, uh, underperformed, and there's a lot of reasons on you know that you could 
that you can kind of put into into play here a little bit about why that happened, right? We saw things in you know at the end of yesterday's video. What I what I talked about was um, you know looking for new market leadership, and I was talking about the industrials yesterday and how strong they were yesterday. What happened to the industrials today? They underperformed. However, just an inside day. If you still like the industrials, an inside day is fine. Um, but you saw things like Caterpillar go down, right? So um, you know, this was also something that, that CNBC said. And, um, and again, we, we talked about all this pre-market, right? We, we, I had said, you know, we were looking at the movers pre-market and I was even trying to figure out the reason why like Caterpillar was down heavy. And, um, you know, you kind of have to go to what transpired overnight in terms of a lot of hedge funds were positioning for, you know, possibly uh, you know a, a, a democratic controlled um, Congress right and meaning hey there's could be infrastructure there could be this and there, there could be that well a lot of those trades you know looks like they were kind of unwound a little bit um, as that wasn't that prediction that, that some of these hedge funds made um, did not turn out because we do have still a Republican Senate and I believe that the Republicans gained some some seats in the House, right? So what that means, in short, is a little bit of probably gridlock, right? For you know whoever ends up being the new president is. For me now, again, remaining objective about this, and and, and again, I, I don't talk politics. We don't talk any politics in the trading room, um, and members have done an amazing job, you know, by by doing that and focusing on the market and so forth. But but we have to talk a little bit about it, right? Because I do get questions about it. Um, you know, if you look over time, it it really. Um, does not matter that much when you look at the price action over time who the president is republican or democrat right it really doesn't make that much difference over time maybe there's a couple years or a couple situations i'm just speaking from previous price action right it it actually there's not much there in terms of that so um you know, and you can send me nasty things about that, but it, it just doesn't seem, the market doesn't seem to really care at, at the end of the day. So if you're thinking one candidate is going to do this and so forth, you know, you could you could Google this stuff and without me, I'm not going to go into, you know, I'm not going to give you a long presentation about why it doesn't matter who's who pre, what president is in office, um, what, you know, uh, what party is you could just kind of look at the history um, of this and you can google the data all right so that's kind of how my feeling is but there's still going to be some trades that are unwound right that were where people were on the wrong fence right people you know this does happen a lot of times where um, and again it's not exactly the same as we said in uh, yesterday's video, you know, I was going through and talking about how the banks outperformed um, a lot last election. You know, these things are not going to repeat exactly, but you do know that, you know, people are, you know, funds are going to be on the wrong side. That's partially, I think, you know, what we saw a little bit of today, in my opinion, was a was some short covering too, right? Um, if you look at uh, the um, equity put to call ratio, which we talked about this too early in the room. Uh, let's see, put to call, here it is. Right, there was a lot of puts being bought the last couple of days, right? That kind of got some fear into the market. And, you know, those who kind of put those bets on incorrectly, they have to take those off a bit, right? So you get a, they get it wrong, they got to cover, right? So that's also, I think, was part of of today right if also if we look at the sector breakdown right which we talked a little bit about the industrials underperforming today the banks right and I wasn't sure you know remember what I said yesterday and I think actually this Morgan Stanley did fine you know this was the trade that I was in still finished up half a percent underperformed um, but if you watch yesterday's video you know you, you know why did I get out of Amazon uh, not Amazon I'm just going through here um, Morgan Stanley, right? Out of Morgan Stanley. You know, I was happy. I took my profits and said, I'm not going to, I don't know, right? Um, I always will have some ideas, 
but you know this was nice to take some profits and like and I said I think the phrase that I used in yesterday's video was you know, take the profits and put them in your pocket for now right this I thought yesterday was a gift I took off exposure yesterday and then what did I do today right um, so I'll go over some of some of these trades um, in just a second but I just want to wrap up the performance um, but yes, but banks were the, were underperformers. Pot stocks were underperformers again. Um, as it seems like, anytime these things rally, it's a place to actually until they reverse the trend. Um, it's been a place to sell. All right. Um, the solar ETF I think came back a little bit, um, but I still think solar. I, is a good trend long term but obviously you know there were bets being placed on even though solar was already up huge um you know hedge funds made some bets on solar right uh, you know going into um you know over the last month and um you know if, if you kind of go back to the trajectory of this trend it's now sitting back at the 50-day moving average so all this was fluff you know hedge funds pushing up uh, solar names as as an election trade, right? So if you made money on this, congratulations to you. But this is what happens, right? Now I think overall, like solar's back to that 50-day moving average. So the fluff came out, right? Of of basically what they did, and there was a couple names that reported earnings in there too, right? But um, yeah, tans back the 50-day moving average. All right. So if you took some profits up here, you know, perhaps somewhere in here, you could. Add it back if you like. Right? It's all part of trading. Um, to talk now about the winners, right? So, so China, you know, China names um, just really went off today. Again, I think that is, you know, I, I could give you a couple political reasons for that, but you know, the Chinese, the Chinese internet names were showing some relative strength, uh, you know, for a couple weeks. So, you know, really impressive. Um, you know, the electronic vehicle names, they kind of dominated early this today. I mean, this XPEV, there was a, there was a couple of research notes out, but up 23%. Um, uh, Neo was up, you know, another 6%. I sold my NEO position a couple days ago. You know, um, I don't have anything on. I traded LI and XPEV a couple weeks ago, so I, I missed this run up in these names. What did I play? Um, you know, I played JD. Um, this was a th so this is kind of interesting, right? And this is this is how sometimes this market will test you a little bit. I put on a JD trade in the beginning of last week. Um, I basically, uh, I you know, I got a little frustrated at the end of last week, and I took JD off. And in my weekend uh, analysis, I'm like, hey, I didn't really need to do that. I'm like, let me put the trade back on. I think this thing is going to resolve itself to the upside. So I got it right. And I think like if you have to make those, you know, and I'm glad that I caught it. Um, but if you have to make those decisions sometimes where you're not feeling it and you unwind a trade, best thing that I could tell you, because I've been in these situations where I unwind a trade and then it, you know, it does what you, what you actually thought it was going to do in the first place. Just make sure that you monitor your trade. You could always get back in. One of the things that newer traders do is they take off a trade and then they don't look at it again. You know, they don't look at the name. They go on to the next name. You could get, you could, if you're not feeling comfortable about something, you can always get out of the name and you could always get back into it, especially if you're trading stock. You know, there, there's no commissions these days. So it doesn't, it's not going to keep costing you commission. Like that was, that was an issue years ago. If you're like, oh, geez, I got to pay commission to get in and get out. It's, there's no commission. So you could change your mind however you want. Um, and you could get right back in. It's not gonna, and it may not even cost you anything. And I think, for me, I think I actually got in when I got back in on Monday. Is that a cheaper price? All right. So very pleased with this with this JD. Um, you know, I did take pro some profits right on the open. I was a net seller on the open. Right. I took advantage of what we saw. You know, being up so much in the morning. Um, I got out of this plan as well. Um, SE has been a has been an has been an absolute monster. So I'm still long these names, um, but of course I'm going to take profits, right? That's the whole name of the game, right? Um, there's a couple of traders every once in a while who who ask me. Somebody asked me on Twitter today for what's your price target in this? 
you know, I don't want to put a price target on this. I want this to go as high as it, however high it wants to go. Now, of course, I have to manage it along the way. When it rips, take some profits. Keep a trailing stop on the balance, right? That is the, really the thing to do, in my opinion, is to know how to keep a trailing stop and keep moving the trailing stop up, right? Um, you're not going to get the tippy tippy high, um, but you're but you can if you do this exercise, you're going to stay in a trade longer than trying to define a price target in a name, right? I mean, look at the trend in this thing. I'm not uh, hopefully I'm not jinxing anything here, but I mean, where you know if you were back here, right, and you asked me to set a price target for the name. You know, what if I told you when the stock was 75, um, oh, 90, right? 90 is my price target, right? Would you have been happy, like, if you took it off at 90? <clears throat> right? So that's the whole name of the game is to try to stick in these trades that work for as long as they can, as long as they will work, um, and then make sure you're managing it so that when it, when it stops working, um, you know, you can get out. And again, um, to kind of help that process, you take targets, right? Take some off into strength. Right? So that's um, that's SE, uh, you know, so again, very strong. Uh, plan JD, um, this apps that uh, I got into right around earnings last week and it didn't do very well on earnings. It actually, you know, came back and this thing looks really good, you know. Um, you know, let's see if it goes up to, to 40 bucks here, but very, very strong in apps. All right. Um, and that's it. Like, I really didn't do a lot of trading this afternoon. Um, the reason why is, you know, I try to scalp a little bit of Apple. Um, well, you know, it wasn't anything great. But again, the majority of the trades that that trading that I did was in the first hour of the day, taking off trades from the overnight move. Um, I know last night, of course, is an unusual thing, but... The majority of how trades work out over time, again, over not just a week or a couple, but over years, is to be putting the trades on at the end of the day and taking them off at the beginning of the day. Why? Because the big moves happen in the overnight market. All right. That's where over time the money is made. Um, I tried to fade TLT a little bit today. Um, I did want to go over the TLT chart as well. Uh, we're about 20 minutes into this video. Notice it's just back to the 200-day moving average. So I think it'll be important to watch TLT here. Um, I, I tried to fade it today, and I took the trade off for, for a small loss um, because it just it ended up uh, being up over 2% for the day. Um, and also what I would watch for tomorrow, if you are looking to, to do something with bonds, um, basically, watch this 161 level on TLT. Notice it took a virgin point of control out. There's another one up here at 164. So I, I personally am not shorting TLT unless it gets back into value. Right? If it hangs around here, I would be concerned that it could continue to kind of get out of this um, trend for now. All right, and then the VIX. All right, um, here's what the VIX did on the one hour. Let's check, take a look, right? So boom, right? You know, it did make a, a, you know, a higher, you know, move than, than this in here. But this is traditionally what happens with the VIX. You have bouts of volatility and then they kind of reverse a little bit. We're still heightened, right? We're still out of 29 in the VIX. Um, you know, and it'll be interesting in the, in the days, weeks to come if we start to get back below 25. Um, that's what I would be watching a little bit for, for confirmation too. Or if it starts to get above 30, so there's there's a lot of things to watch, right? Um, I didn't even talk about the move in healthcare today, but um, just like that, within a couple days, healthcare, which acted, you know, not great, I would say the last few weeks, all of a sudden gets back to an all-time high. Not the best candle there for the XLV ETF. Um, XBI, which is the equally weighted biotech ETF, so the small companies get the same representation as the large companies, very strong, up 6%, and that's also at all-time highs, just like that, in a matter of two days, um, and that's what I was referring to with, with really fast moves. Um, the internet names, they did quite fine today, um, and the builders, right? Of course, I think the builders moving a little bit on interest rates too, but, you know, 
Lennar is up, to, I think Lennar's up 12% this week. Right? That was one of our watch list names for this weekend. Um, very impressive. I think Zillow's going to be interesting. Zillow reports after the close tomorrow. So that'll be a name that we're watching. Good results. I didn't even talk about the semis either, but AMD, you know, woke up today. Goldman gave them an, uh, Goldman gave them an upgrade. If you want a level to watch in AMD, 81 bucks. Right, that's your level to watch in AMD. Also, Nvidia got going today. Um, you know, finally, uh, that uh, you know got out of its downtrend very quickly and, and is moving quite nicely. Right, um, some short-term resistance will be 565 for that, but nice-looking recapture of all those short-term moving averages in one day. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.